This is Sam Drill with Game Dev's Bible, a series on everything game development and design. So, here we are with the probably long-awaited video on my channel, the Unity vs Unreal Engine 4 debate. If you're wanting to know whether you should use Unreal Engine 4 or Unity for your programming project to fit your needs, then this is for you. Oh, and one more thing, this is this video primarily applies to programmers only. Um, doesn't matter the skill range, beginner, medium, expert programmers. For artists and designers, I'll be doing another video which solely focuses on the features you guys will be interested in. So I'll add a link to that when that video is complete. Let's get started. So to make this easier, I'm going to split this whole debate into a couple of sections. I mean, it's easier to script that way. You get it? Scripting, because game programming. We'll get to that in a bit, then maybe you'll get the joke. Anyway, let's talk programming languages. So let's discuss the big programming question, one that you can easily find out, but what language does X use? What language does each engine use? Well, to put it simply, Unreal Engine 4, unlike its predecessors, uses C++ and only requires Visual Studio to be installed to use it. Unity, on the other hand, has always used C Sharp and continues to do so. Their version of C Sharp included with all its libraries and everything is usually known as Unity Script or Monoscript and it has its own editor Mono Develop as well included in Unity but it also has the ability to be connected to Visual Studio. Okay so what does this mean Sam? Well most experienced programmers or most programmers in general will know that C++ is a much more powerful and diverse programming language than C Sharp. And as a result, it's quite a low-level programming language. That means you'll be able to get much better performance and optimization and be able to do basically anything you can imagine out of it. While C Sharp, on the other hand, is probably something they call like a medium-level programming language. It's not too high, but it's not low. Um, the reason for this is it has a lot of safeguards and features. So it's not as powerful or efficient, but it is a lot less error-prone and as a result is much easier to use for beginners. But I learned C++ before the C-sharp, and I didn't think it was that hard. Good for you, I don't care, okay? I don't need to see that comment. I see that comment all the time on my Blueprints vs. C++ video. That statement doesn't apply to you, then. You don't need to tell me that, but ask yourself this. Are you using C++ in the best way possible? I mean, yes, it's easy to learn. It's just a normal programming language, but it's very difficult to master. C-sharp, on the other hand, is easier to learn, and it's easier to master thanks to all its safeguards and features. So what? Does it really matter what language it uses? I mean, not really, no. If you're used to C++, then you'd probably already be preferring UE4. If you're used to C Sharp, then you'd probably be preferring Unity. But, no, I guess it kind of doesn't, to be honest, because while C++ will be a lot more optimized and you can get that split-second fast performance for every frame, chances are that if you were considering using Unity, you weren't really thinking of needing that much performance boost. And really, it depends on how optimized your code is anyway. Generally speaking, anything you want to do in C++, you can probably also do in C Sharp to a point. And... A more efficient programmer using C Sharp will have much better performance than a new beginner using C++. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter what programming language it defaults with now anyway, as there are becoming a lot of plugins for both engines, some of which actually give you the ability to use different programming languages. So I've not entirely seen a C Sharp plugin for Unreal, I've got to say, but I have seen uh, Lua scripting, but I have seen a C++ pl plugin for Unity. Although do keep in mind that this is a plugin, and it will be called using the C Sharp, so it might not actually benefit from the native C++ benefits it comes with, but if you're used to C++ and don't use C Sharp, it does mean you will not have to learn the Unity script version of C Sharp. And both engines use their own libraries anyway. Um, a lot of unused ones will be compiled into your game, even though the engines tend to remove the ones you haven't used. It will leave in things like 3D rendering, even if you're only using a 2D game, just because of how built in that is. This means that it doesn't really matter which program language you use, because most of the time all the features you'll need will be included in both. So speaking of libraries, 
we'll discuss those next. So now you're probably thinking, okay, if I want to use C Sharp, I should go Unity. If I want to go C++, I should use Unreal Engine, right? Because they've both got the libraries I need. So does it really matter? Well, I mean, you're not wrong, but you're not right. You also have to include their you also have to consider their default included libraries and what performance impact this can have on your game. Because a lot of the included libraries in Unity might be written in C sharp, that will have more of a, more of a performance impact than the ones written in C in UE4. Although a lot of Unity is written in C under the hood. As mentioned above though, both engines do tend to include things like 3D libraries and rendering, even if you're only using sprites and 2D. This will mean your game will still consider using those libraries, and will be a little less optimised than you'd hope. So basically, it can depend on the libraries offered, and the variation of not including the ones you want. So both engines tend to include very similar libraries to one another, as they are now the backstanding features you expect your engine to have such as rigid bodies, 3D rendering, PBR, all that kind of thing. Okay, why do I care what libraries it has then, Sam? You've gone on about them for a few minutes now. If they're natively built in, they'll be optimised with the engine, and if I can't remove the ones I don't need, do I really need to care they included? Again, this is yes, no, maybe. I'm just here to describe what the engines have, not really how it affects you. I mean, if you're looking to build a game on mobile, it has been noted, and I do actually have experience with this too, that the application may be around like 20 megabytes at the smallest, due to everything Unity is trying to package with it. And that's on Unity. I'm not too sure about Unreal Engine itself. This is something programmers might want to take into consideration, because we will tend to deal with the more compressive things relating to the... Uh, game and application, the artist will obviously be able to compress their measures and we will help them by including code that can compress things and load them indifferently so that they don't increase the already quite large package size. Also, knowing what libraries your engine includes is very important for the type of game you want to make. For example, Unreal Engine is generally used for shooters and along with every new iteration of the engine, comes a new entry in the Unreal Tournament series, as I'm sure most people know. It's like they're trying to drive this point home that it's great for third-person shooters. So it already includes, by default, most if not all the libraries and classes and codes you need to quickly and effectively make a prototype for a first-person shooter. There's still a lot of work you'd need to do personally, but unlike Unity, which, because of its vagueness and open development target, that's how it brands itself, it has very used li very few libraries that you could use to very quickly create or prototype a product, though there tend to be a lot of these on the store. But because of this, it has less and scripts and libraries that you would need to care and or worry about when packaging your game. So again, the battles are sort of 50-50, where Unity may not exactly have the basic fun functionalities outside of physics, etc. that you would want to include very quickly, it's less data heavy and intensive and would package less with your game. Whilst UE4 might be more data heavy thanks to all the libraries it has, but it's also faster and easier to use these as it offers a general as it offers a lot of generically created components that most people use. Alright, so my joke before was kinda of terrible about scripting, I know that. But Scripting is a feature that is found in many editors and many games. It allows for quick and easy changes to the codes to create new events and variable changes without having to go into the, the source code itself. However, I'm not going to go into the benefits of scripting here, but check out this GDC video where a developer at DICE describes the benefits of using scripting in your engine as they did with the Frostbite engine, commonly used for Battlefield and Battlefront and now many of EA's larger games. Unreal Engine 4 has plugins to be able to use the most common scripting language that is used by games programmers. This is Lua scripting, as will be found in the GDC talk. This language is used in a lot of development places, not just games, and so has kind of become the industry standard to have the ability to include. Unity also has the ability to get plugins from Lua script, however, unlike 
UE4 where I've seen developers in forums and on the store, it seems to not be a big feature that's worked on right now. So I'm not too sure how good it is to use. But again, Unity's whole programming language kind of works like scripting, so it's not too big a deal there. And now I feel it's vital to mention the Unreal Engine 4's other programming language that I'm sure someone's already put a comment about because they couldn't wait to get to this part of the video. UE4 has its own Blueprint system. Blueprints is a visual scripting language, which is why I did not include it as a programming language, because it's a scripting language. And this itself requires only a little bit of programming knowledge like Lua or any other scripting language does, and it's actually represented visually using sort of graphs and chart. It's difficult to describe, but here's an example on screen now to see what it looks like. Unity does treat its classes and programming as scripts, as I've just mentioned. In fact, that's actually what it calls them. Unity calls their programming parts scripts, and these can be placed onto any objects in the scene and even has functionality so that you can drag items to a sort of item selection bar on the inspector linked to an object with that script on, and now that object will be linked to the instance of that script. So that was a lot of words, what does that mean? So what I mean is you link a door to a button which has a script for opening and closing something it is related to. So when the user presses the button, the button tells the attached script that the attached object needs to be open or closed rather than us having to code it so it goes, okay, this is the kind of door we want to find. We're gonna go through the scene we're going to link it, and now we're going to open it and close it. So this is incredibly helpful and powerful, as it means level design can be done so much faster. But again, you don't need to worry about using ways to find the exact door you're looking for, because Unity handles that all for you. You just have to drag and drop. Now the final part is optimization and customization. So we come to the most important part of games programming, optimization, and I'll explain what I mean by customization in just a moment. So what I mean by the ability to customize is the way things like the game loop operates. So in UE4, you have one basic functionality that is called event tick, and this event tick is something that is called on every frame. So if the game runs at 60 frames per second, it's called 60 times a second. If it's running at 120 frames per second, it's called 120 times a second, and so on and so forth. But this is per actor. So if you have 10 I don't know, zombies every frame looking for the player, and your game's running at 60 FPS, then you're not doing 60 calls to this a second. You're not doing 60 instances of trying to find your player. You're doing 60 times 10, so it'd be 600. And there is another type of functionality called Event Fixed Update, which is a Unity-only feature, although you can put this into UE4 yourself. So Fixed Update is an event from Unity which happens every physics update, and Unity has this set up by default, and it happens every something of a second. I'm not too sure what it is, but you can imagine this sort of like uh, vSync kind of thing. So in vSync you tend to lock your game to the refresh rate of the screen so the game only updates every for example 1 60th of a second for a 60 hertz screen. A physics update would work that you make it so it happens only 30 times a second. So there is a sort of timer that says has it been 1 30th of a second since the last physics update? If it has then do whatever is in the fixed update and update all the physics. This means that we don't have to constantly update every part of the physics and do all the physics calculations and it makes the pressure on the CPU a lot less and means we're not giving ourselves a lot of overhead and optimizing our game fully. In Unity, this is seen as two split functions for the event tick and the physics tick. It's called void update and void fixed update. This means the code and optimization can actually be built better than in UE4 because, as I said, in UE4 there's one basic functionality called event tick, 
and the programmer would have to make an event fix tick themselves using floats and timers and all this. So if the programmer doesn't do that in UE4, then the optimization can become really bad. And it will be primarily the programmer's fault for not using, for not having the foresight to create their own physics tick and physics update. This is sort of the biggest customization and optimization event that I feel needs to be mentioned, and it's why it's primarily the only thing I have mentioned. Doing things on event tick and event physics update is the difference between playable frame rate and watching a PowerPoint slideshow with the occasional animation that you used to waste 10 seconds per slide on back in the high school because you thought it was cool. So I believe Unity is better in this situation for neatly laying out the code in a manner that makes more sense and is easier to read by new and experienced programmers alike. And it's also easy to understand thanks to the quite helpful Unity scripting manual. Though at first saying users may be confused why there are two tick functions, I'd argue that if you're an absolute beginner to understand why there would be two functions, you should be reading the documentation and not and reading tutorials and completing them rather than complaining that you're confused. Which brings me to the main part against UE4 in every section, and that's why I've left it to last. The programming documentation sucks. I can't express that enough. It's even in caps in my script right here. They've been working on it for two to three years now, apparently, but it hasn't improved at all. The blueprints documentation is actually quite nearly done. It is a bit outdated here and there because the occasional update breaks it, but the actual C++ is terrible, and they need to work on that and not just say, we are, because they're clearly not. In conclusion... That was four major sections to describe the debate between UE4 and Unity. And now you might be left with the question still. Again, I was not trying to give you a definitive answer. If you still don't know which engine to choose, then chances are both will provide exactly what you need. If you've not got any reason to go to Unity more than you do UE4, then it's completely up to you. However, if you're wanting something easy to script, or you're wanting to do things really quickly, you might think Unity... Or if you want that really powerful optimization, you might think UE4. But again, this thing is jumping between them. The really the recommendation that can be is read more into it. This is already a really like 20 minute long video. And you could go on for hours about the differences. Personally, I use UE4 for desktop and console. Whilst Unity I tend to do for portable, mobile or smaller games due to different sizes, rendering means, and the easiness to create it. I hope this helped in some way. Thanks for watching guys, if you'd like to see more of this then hit the subscribe button and mash that like button, obviously an odd number of times so it stays liked, and if you want to help me create more content like this, feel free to check out my Patreon and maybe think about becoming a donor. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.